Entrepreneur on Fire 1054. People who do are rewarded with the adventures that they have. People who dream are rewarded with the safety that they have. Hey, Fire Nation, and welcome to EO Fire, where I chat with inspiring entrepreneurs seven days a week. What's shaking, Fire Nation? John Lee Doom is here, and I am fired up to bring you our featured guest today, Tim David. Tim, are you prepared to ignite? Hell no. John, <laughs> I got to say, man, if you are ready for something, that means it's too small. <laughs> this Whoa. is freaking entrepreneur on fire. You know, I have spent too much of my life asking myself if I'm ready. You know, am I ready to launch? Am I ready to go to market? Am I ready, you know, to begin a new workout routine or have my wife quit her job? And honestly, when I stopped asking myself if I was ready and instead started asking myself if I was willing, then everything changed. So, yes, I am absolutely willing. <laughs> it only took 1,054 episodes, Fire Nation, for someone to finally catch on. Now, Tim is a magician turned professional speaker. His book, Magic Words, has been featured in the New York Times, Harvard Business Review, Psychology Today, Huffington Post, The Today Show, and hundreds of other media outlets around the world, and is fast becoming required reading on the topic of influence and motivation. Tim, take a minute. Fill in some gaps in that intro and give us a little glimpse into your personal life. Absolutely. Well, I, I got to be honest, you know, I designed my life to be pretty low key. And, you know, I'm not sure when it became cool to be insanely busy and to have all these crazy things going on. But, you know, maybe I'm just not uh, cool in that way. Gary Vaynerchuk made it cool. Oh, yeah, <laughs> I guess so. Uh, well, I'm more, more of a family man. You know, I focus on my wife. I have an eight-year-old girl. I have a five-year-old girl and a brand new baby boy. So the baby effect is in full swing. Um, I am a speaker. I'm an author, which is awesome. You know, it pays the bills, which, of course, allows my wife to stay home with the kids and gets us to some pretty cool destination spots around the world, uh, gives me the freedom, the flexibility to work passionately and purposefully uh, when it's time to work and to live fully when it's not. So uh, I got to say, though, this is very, very different than how I was raised. My mother was an accountant. My older brother went off and became a sound engineer, works for Bose Speaker Corporation. My father is an ex-physics professor who designed nuclear submarines for the Navy. So naturally, I went off to school, right? <laughs> I mean, that was sort of the family way. Start your career, get your degree, you know, start, get a job. That's the family way. So I did. I studied psychology uh, for a little while. <laughs> you know, I love the brain uh, and I feel like you should too. You know, I think that if you work with people as entrepreneurs, that's what we do. We, we essentially work with people, with our customers, with our clients, with our coworkers. So if you work with people, then you really should know how people work. So I love psychology. Problem is school was not for me. So I remember coming home and telling my dad, I figured it out. I know what I want to do with my life. I'm going to be a professional magician. Right? So completely <laughs> blew their mind. That was my first business, my first entrepreneurial experience. And although my dad and I really butted heads, I've never ever looked back. So to your listeners, I really just want to say this, don't let don't really ever let any other people tell you what success is. Yeah, and Tim, I want to really put an exclamation point behind that. There's a great book, The 10 Biggest Regrets of the Dying. And in that book, the number one regret is, I wish I had lived my life and not been influenced by outside influencers. Like, it's so unbelievable that this is your life, Fire Nation. You need to be taking responsibility for the, the path that you're on. And Tim, you're at a networking party. Someone walks up to you and they ask, what do you do? How do you respond in 10 seconds? And I'm timing you. I got you. Well, I'm actually not a huge fan of the elevator pitch. Uh, or, or rather, at this, least this counts as your 10 seconds, by the way. Uh, that's fine. That's fine. Let's do it. Um, or at least how much most people approach it. Um, you know, for me, I want people to leave their first interaction with me feeling served and not sold. And the only time I've ever needed a tight elevator pitch is when I'm at a, at a networking event where everyone's just focused on selling their own crap anyway. Served, not sold. I Bingo. mean, Fire Nation, I think those are the key words that we need to hold on to right there. If you can serve people, be of value to people, then 
truly the world would be your oyster. Now, Tim, you talked about a lot of different ways that you generate revenue. I mean, you named a lot of things, but let's get specific. And again, keep this short, but what are the ways that you generate revenue? I still do the occasional magic show for corporate events, yeah. but that really is only bringing in a, what I consider fun money, you know, which is about 50 grand a year, allows my wife to stay home. And, uh, and I do it while having fun. But I also have a core group of guys that I'm talking through uh, how to become a professional speaker. And obviously, I can see the appeal. You get to travel. You get to help people. And, you know, five to $10,000 or more per hour, you know, not too bad. So the bulk of my income is from actually doing that doing the speaking gigs, which is amazing. I get to help people transform their thoughts so they can transform their results. Very now, fun. a lot of people do say that, you know, hey, like my path to wealth is going to be by writing a book. And, and to be honest, that has worked for some people. Now, your book has been featured in all those amazing places that we talked about. I mean, New York Times, the Today Show, Huffington Post. Um, you want to get specific with numbers, but I mean, would you be able to rely on that revenue alone to provide for your family? Absolutely not. I was just talking with another author about this, and the truth is, you know, getting in those media outlets is really just about one thing and one thing only, and that is building my list. Mm. That's my entire focus. That's all I care about. That's where the money comes from, not the book sales. Really glad you clarified that. So, Tim, now let's talk about a story, and this story is going to be really focus on your entrepreneurial journey. And I want you to take us not to one of the many great moments that you've had, but instead to what you consider your worst entrepreneurial moments thus far. Take us there right down to the ground level. So hard to decide. So hard to pick what these are. Um, but there was a moment on my 22nd birthday. I remember it was around 6.30 p.m. and I was working on one of my books and that was sort of my life. You know, it was about proving dad wrong, you know, and really getting out there and making money and, That's and good getting motivator. as many, uh, yeah, getting as many shows as I uh, booked as I could. And it was my birthday. I was, I was turning 22 years old and I realized at 6.30 PM, nobody had wished me happy birthday. There were no mm. cards. There was before Facebook. So there was not a thousand Facebook messages. <laughs> and around 6.30, the phone rings and uh, I pick it up and the voice at the other end said, Hey buddy. Happy birthday. And it was bittersweet because somebody had called to wish me a happy birthday, but it turns out it was Paul, my financial advisor. Oh. So there was a moment in time when I realized, is this pursuit really, really important? So later on in life, I, uh, I took this other path and I, and I created this, this, uh, this idea. You know, I called it the Grab Life Project, and this led to my other failure for a different reason. And this failure was a gradual, slow failure, a slow quitting, I'll call it. It wasn't a bad decision. It wasn't a, a poor financial investment. It was just poor execution. And I think that can wrap up uh, most of the failures in our lives. They just sort of slowly fade away. And it could have been something amazing. But at the same time, the lack of commitment is what I'm really, really embarrassed about. So that project was abandoned and um, it really, again, is one of the most embarrassing things in my life. Yeah, my favorite word for that is actually drifting. You know, that's one thing that I just see so many entrepreneurs do. You know, you start with all this energy and this pizzazz, you get a little bit of momentum, a couple quick early wins, you know, but then the grind starts, you know, then the real work starts because you got to continue going forward and keep coming up with content, you know, maybe even after you're tapped out. And then things just kind of start to drift, you know, one mm. day turns into two, turns into a week, turns into a month, and you're just kind of drifting. And, and, and I really think, Fire Nation, that we have to focus and have that really legitimate plan that we are following if we want to guarantee continued success, not just that initial success. The worst part is that this was all about you know, grabbing life and being consistent with that and living life to the fullest. So the very idea was, uh, you know, was, was against that. And yet it still happened anyway. One sentence, Tim, what's your big takeaway that you really want Fire Nation to walk away with? I think what this really did for me was it shifted my focus away from accumulation. You know, I think it's possible to accumulate too much stuff in this world but it's really impossible to accumulate too much, um, really, human connection. I think that's, at the end of the day, it's about relationships. And when you miss the boat on that, 
What else matters? Yeah, what else matters? I was just listening to a great audiobook. I had Darren Hardy, the founder of Success Magazine, on a couple of days ago, and and he was just talking about different things with his book, uh, The Entrepreneur Roller Coaster. So I was like, I need to get back and listen to that. And he talked about this one story where this guy was on his deathbed, and this Fire Nation, you know I'm not usually this morbid. I don't usually talk about this this much, but the guy was on his deathbed, and he grabs Darren, and he says, Darren, don't miss the point. It's not about the stuff. It's about the people. And, you know, Darren kind of took this as a wake-up call and has since really radically shifted his life. And luckily, he was in his mid-30s when that happens, so he had time to. But for this guy on his deathbed, it was too late. Like, the guy missed the point. It was about human connection, not material. And, Tim, what I want you to do is tell us another story. This one's going to be an epiphany, an aha moment. I mean, you have these for breakfast, my friend, but what is one that you think is going to resonate with our listeners and take us to that moment in time. This is a story about a coach that I had hired. And, you know, again, I'm, I'm really, really passionate about working with people who have gone before. There's no need to reinvent the wheel. There's no need to think and create and, and work too hard sometimes. Sometimes the path has been laid out for you. So I'm, I'm obsessed with, uh, with, with those kinds of shortcuts. And, and I hired a coach, and I remember hiring him for a very specific reason. I want my wife to not have to work. I want her to stay home. What can I do? How can I grow my business? How can I achieve the next level? And, and this was all about that. And I remember one day, he, or, or one, at one moment in that process, he said to me, you know, how much do you need? He said, well, you know, I really only need about $50,000 a year to replace that income. And he looked right at me and he said, Tim, you can do that in a month. You can do that in a month. There's no annual here. I mean, that is a monthly figure for, for your capabilities, your, you know, um, uh, skill sets. And it really hit home for me. And, and ultimately, you know, over the, over the course of the years, uh, that came true for me and came true very, very quickly uh, after hearing that and having that belief instilled. So that was definitely an aha moment. Huge, huge, huge. Replace your wife's income in one month if you believe it. And Tim, that's all you needed was a mindset shift. I mean, that reminds me so clearly and really shows the importance, Fire Nation, of investing in yourself with the right mentor. And when I had Lewis Howes mentoring me, this is back in 2013, he said, John, like, what's your, your financial goal for 2014? I said, you know, I would love to make $500,000 in one year. And, he, and he's like, John, we're going to get you to where you're doing that in a month. And, you know, sure enough, a handful of months ago, we did, you know, had our first 500K month, but I could never even have fathomed that. It takes people who have been there to bring us up, Fire Nation, open our eyes. And, and Tim experienced it. I experienced it. You need to invest in yourself with the right mentors. That's my big takeaway, Tim, from your story. What's yours? Well, I think, you know, add a zero, take a zero away. doesn't matter. I think that principle, it really boils down to mindset. It really boils down to belief. It really boils down to what you believe is possible. I mean, as a magician, my focus was I only cared about the impossible. If it wasn't impossible, it was off my radar. It didn't matter. So go after those, those big goals. Stop succeeding at things that don't matter and, and really stretch yourself and, uh, and, and have that mindset that anything is possible. Yeah, and Fire Nation, you're saying, well, I don't really know what matters. Well, that's where the mentor comes in. So huge stuff. Tim, what's your biggest weakness as an entrepreneur? You know, I don't know, and I think that's the problem. You know, I sometimes try to, I try to go it alone. I can't see my blind spots. I've got to be reminded of them by coaches, by accountability partners, by mastermind groups. I think that's so important, and sometimes I forget that, and I think that's my biggest weakness. What's your biggest strength? I don't have a biggest strength. I have an only strength. I only have one thing that I do well, and that is having a growth mindset. You know, I suffer from a pretty crippling depression and anxiety, and I know that a lot of people I talk to, they have similar kinds of things. I don't want this to turn into a drama show or anything. But having a growth mindset, having the, the possibility 
that the future can be better and I can become better. And I love what Jim, Jim Rohn says, success is something you attract by the person you become. But I remember I was sitting in my bed one day just feeling absolutely lazy, unmotivated, crippled by this moment of depression. And I kept thinking to myself, I'm so lazy, but I've got to wake up earlier I'm, or I'm so you know, out of shape, but I have to ex exercise or I'm so busy, but I, I feel like I want to you know, maybe read more or whatever. I had all these goals and I, had to, I was changing the wrong thing. I had to shift my mindset. Instead of saying I'm lazy, I had to shift my mindset and say, you know what? My entire identity has changed. I'm no longer lazy. And the next morning, you know, when, when I woke up, I remember thinking, all right, I'm no longer lazy. So now the natural response is to get up and get up early. So shift, you know, when you shift your mindset, when you shift your uh, belief system again, everything, everything changes. Yeah, and we were actually talking pre-interview a little bit about how Elrod and the Miracle Morning and how that does such a great job about setting your mind in the right direction. You know, first things first, right, when you get up in the morning. And it actually even starts the night before, you know, your night tasks to make sure mm -hmm. that you get the right amount of sleep in the right way. And Tim, what's the one thing that has you most fired up right now? Simple. Logging my time. I am fanatically logging my time right now. I'm tracking every single minute. I'm sharing it with my accountability partner, and we've been doing this for weeks, and what I'm finding is a couple things. The Hawthorne effect is kicking in. You know, now that I know I'm being watched, I'm way more productive, <laughs> right? <laughs> but also, I'm seeing just exactly where the time is going, and that is our most precious resource. And how can you fix something if you don't track it or know it? So, but the biggest takeaway is that what I'm noticing is the, the chunk of family time is the biggest chunk. It's the biggest bulk of my day. And that is my, what I would th think is something I'm most proud of and uh, really, really excited about and fired up about. Well, Fire Nation, I'm fired up because we're about to enter the lightning round. But before we do, let's take a minute to thank our sponsors. Tim, are you prepared for the lightning rounds? I am ready. <laughs> what was holding you back <laughs> from becoming an entrepreneur? Absolutely nothing. I had no choice. I am an entrepreneur with every fiber of my being. Uh, actually, in fact, entrepreneurship held me back from being normal. Right? Uh, I, I got to say that people who do are rewarded with the adventures that they have, and people who dream are rewarded with the safety that they have. And for me, it's not about dreaming big. It's not about thinking big. I think anybody can do that. For me, it's about doing big. It's about acting big. And quite frankly, it's about failing big and failing forward. So that is the entrepreneurial spirit in a nutshell. That's who I am. What's the best advice you've ever received? Came from a sales coach. I was hiring this guy again to help me with my sales process. And he, I, was, I was asking him questions. I said, what do I do? How do I, what if they say this? And how do I approach that? He said, Tim, I'm not talking to you anymore until you go out and get me some no's. Go get people to say no to you. In other words, go and fail, make the mistake, get the experience under your belt. That was invaluable advice. What's a personal habit that contributes to your success? I'm obsessive about what magicians call watching your angles. Hmm. When I am practicing a magic trick, I obsessively look at it in, in front, I practice in front of a mirror and see how it looks from your point of view. When I'm coached by other, uh, you know, magicians, they tell me, watch your angles. Don't forget about me over here in the wings. I can see this that they're not supposed to see. And the bottom line is I have a habit of taking other people's perspective. And I think that Surveys, for example, something a lot of entre entrepreneurs do. I think that surveys suck. Too many entrepreneurs are in the tell me what you want and I'll do it business. And what we have to do is we have to be much more romantic w than that. People don't know what they want and they don't want to tell you what they want. You know, they want you to know what they want and they want you to serve them uh, and be an expert in what they want because people are not even experts in what they want. <laughs> Steve Jobs, Jeff Bezos, they know what we want before we do. And the ability to take other people's perspectives and to see a need that they don't even know they have and then solve that need and fill that need, that is a huge important habit. Mm, well said. Do you have an internet resource like Evernote that you can share with our listeners? Timetrade.com. We need to protect our 
time. All of my appointments, all of my coaching sessions, both with my coaches and the students that I coach, are all scheduled with Timetrade.com. It's a beautiful calendar interface. Uh, I sit down at the beginning of the day. All my uh, appointments are right on the screen in front of me. The phone number pops up. I just dial in, and I'm good to go. If you could recommend just one book for our listeners, what would it be and why? I think Adam Grant wrote a wonderful book called Give and Take, and it's about how nice guys don't always finish last and the reasons <laughs> why. And I think that's a, just a beautiful, beautiful uh, book and concept, and I love how the science backs that up. Well, thank goodness for us, Tim, <laughs> and Fire Nation. <laughs> and Tim, this is the last question of the lightning round, but it's a doozy. Imagine you woke up tomorrow morning in a brand new world, identical to Earth, but you knew no one. You still have all the experience and knowledge you currently have. Your food and shelter is taken care of, but all you have is a laptop and $500. What would you do in the next seven days? First things first, I got to get my mindset right. So I'm going to give away that 500 bucks to get out of scarcity mindset. Then as a speaker, uh, I have a simple you know, is it an eight step process that I, that I go through to build my speaking business? I'm going to take them one step at a time. Uh, I'm going to go through the first four. I'm going to decide on a topic that I am passionate about that I know people will pay for. Those two things got to be met. I got to be passionate about it. It's got to be something people will pay for. Then I'm going to go and write a 20 minute, what I call manifesto speech. This is about why my topic is so important, why I'm so passionate about it. And I'm going to make sure that every person in my audience feels that passion and that motivation to take an action step on my topic. Then I'm going to create something tangible. This doesn't have to be a 500-page book. This can be something very, very simple. It's going to be ugly if it has to be. I don't care. I just am going to get it done. Make sure it's valuable to my target audience. And then the fourth step is really what I call networking on steroids. I'm going to go, I'm going to deliver speeches to people, anybody who's going to listen to me. I don't have to earn a fee yet. I just want to get in front of audience. I want to get flight time. I want to send my message out there. I want to deliver my speech and my tangible product in order to build a list. Again, serve first that attracts the list to you, and then I can uh, continue to uh, offer programs and products and have a sustainable, reliable income stream based on that. That's a rewindable Fire Nation. Make it happen. And Tim, let's end today on Fire Brother with you sharing one parting piece of guidance, the best way that we can connect with you, then we'll say goodbye. It's got to be go get some no's, you know, go fail forward. Failure is not just the best teacher. It is the only teacher. If you really want to master something, you've got to fail through it. Stop being afraid of that. What we should be afraid of is succeeding at things that are too small. And how do we find you? Well, I went out and registered Tim David on fire. No. Com. I got to say, I'm really glad that that wasn't already taken because <laughs> I'm just thinking somebody wanted me to be on fire if that was the case. So <laughs> Tim David on fire dot com. This is going to give a whole bunch of free resources to your listeners. I practice what I preach, John. Serve first before you sell. So there's tons of free goodies, including my actual 10 second elevator Whoa. pitch oh. exactly why I use oh, it. Nice. <laughs> Fire Nation, you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. You've been hanging out with Tim D and JLD today. So keep up the heat and head over to eofire.com. Just type Tim in the search bar. His show notes page will pop right up with everything that we've been talking about today, resources, books. Of course, go directly to timdavidonfire.com for all the goodies there, all that awesome free. He's serving. He's serving you, Fire Nation. And check out Magic Words. You know, that's his great book. It's much acclaim. It's been everywhere you've ever heard. And uh, it's worth a read. Big time. And Tim, I want to thank you for sharing your journey with Fire Nation today. And for that, we salute you and we'll catch you on the flip side. Thanks, John. Fire Nation, thank you for joining us on EO Fire. Visit eofire.com for links to everything we chatted about today, killer resources, free trainings, and so much more. The Fire Nation newsletter is the bomb, and to get on it, all you need to do is text EO Fire to 33444. 
That's EO Fire, all one word, no spaces, to 33444. And you'll get insights from my head to your inbox weekly. Today is your day, Fire Nation. Ignite.